Hello, this is John Hellebrandt with GlideFast Consulting, and today I'd like to talk to you about what ITSM is. So what is ITSM? The definition of ITSM, according to Wikipedia, is IT service management refers to the entirety of activities directed by policies organized and structured in processes and supporting procedures that are performed by an organization to design, plan, deliver, operate, and control information technology services offered to customers. There are a lot of benefits to ITSM, and I have some listed here. Uh, some of them, starting at the top, enable collaboration across various teams and departments, establish well-defined IT processes that are repeatable and manageable, empower teams to share knowledge and continuously improve, improve efficiency of IT help desk teams, enable customer centricity with self-service functionality, respond more quickly to major incidents and prevent them from reoccurring, decrease overall costs for IT operations, well-defined roles and responsibilities, and clear expectations of service levels and availability via service level management. And with that said, uh, there are several different processes and or applications that make up ITSM, and I'm going to share a few of them here and go through them. And, and, and you'll see that each of these has a screenshot in ServiceNow, and I will show you uh, the application after I go through a few of these uh, processes slash applications. Uh, so the first one here is incident management. The goal of the incident management process is to restore a normal service operation as quickly as possible and to minimize the impact on business operations, thus ensuring that the best possible levels of service quality and availability are maintained. Normal service operation is defined here as service operation within a service level agreement. Now an SLA basically dictates uh, it's an agreement between the business and the client on how, what the percentage of that the application stay up. Um, it also is, it also reflects uh, when the service should be brought back up. How long do you have if an incident occurs? Uh, if a service is down, how long do you have to bring that back up? Um, and you could also have OLAs, which are operational level agreements, and those can work between teams. So each team can be designated an operational level agreement, and that kind of dictates how how long does a team have to work on that particular ticket before uh, the, the OLA is, is breached? Um, and I will show you that as well. Uh, the next process slash application uh, is problem management. And problem management is the process responsible for managing the life cycle of all problems that happen or could happen in an IT service. The primary objectives of problem management are to prevent problems and resulting incidents from happening to eliminate reoccurring incidents and to minimize the impact of incidents that cannot be prevented. So what this means, uh, so problem is often used when there's a, an incident or a number of incidents created for a particular issue that can't be resolved immediately. They don't know, uh, they don't know how to resolve the issue. The, you know, a help desk has tried to look at it. They tried to work on it through, you know, on the phone with the user. They can't, they can't figure it out. So. And uh, ultimately, a problem is created, and it can be tracked through that. Also, you can create a known error once you know uh, once once it's a known error, and there's maybe a workaround. You can create a known error for uh, uh, with the problem, um, and a root cause analysis, etc. You can also, and you can see the screenshot here. Uh, you can also attach a change request or link a change request to the problem. Assuming, let's say you. We have a workaround. We have a we have a solution for the problem, and we want to submit a change request uh, to fix the issue. We can tie that in to the problem right here, and I will show you that in the ServiceNow application as well, and how all these tie together. The next uh, process and application from a ServiceNow perspective is change management. Uh, and change management is defined as the process that ensures standardized methods and procedures are used for efficient and prompt handling of all changes to control IT infrastructure in order to minimize the number and impact of any re related incidents upon service. This could include the addition of new hardware, software, code updates, and patches. So what this is, uh, this basically is a control structure for any time a change needs to happen in a, in a production environment, a, a change request is created and it goes through an approval process. It can have any number of approvals for, from the application owners to the cab approvals, et cetera, et cetera. And once all of those have been created, uh, there is a start and end plan date of when that uh, change will occur in the system. 
and there may be a number of tasks generated uh, for each of the fulfillment teams for, for handling that work. The next process slash application is asset management. Uh, an asset management is the process of deploying, operating, maintaining, upgrading, and disposing of assets cost effectively. In a nutshell, asset management ensures that all assets, tangible and intangible, are tracked and being used in an organization. Uh, so basically, this, this accounts for servers, uh, computers, laptops, anything that the system owns and has a serial number, whether it's in use, the asset tag, who it's assigned to, et cetera, et cetera. So this tracks all uh, assets in an organization. Another process uh, which is commonly used is called service request management. Service request management is the process of handling customer service requests to applications, hardware updates, software enhancements, password resets, etc. And it includes any variety of requests that can be repeatable and possibly automated. This allows customers to make service requests via a front end or other similar mechanism without involving service desk. So this is for uh, this is essentially for automating um, repeatable requests that users may they, they may want to monitor, they may want a computer or an iPhone or something, so they can they can go out to a portal or a website, um, and they can navigate to the request itself, and they can order order the request, and you can set it up on the back end to have any number of approvals. Um, so if if it if it's over a certain amount of money, you can require the manager approval or other additional approvals on top of that, and then after it's approved, you can create some additional tasks, fulfillment tasks that are assigned to specific teams. This this keeps this keeps service desk out of the picture, so you don't have to so the customers don't have to keep calling service desk for uh, things that really aren't issues. There are more requests of items and uh, like uh, uh, applications, things like that. And finally, uh, knowledge management uh, is the process of creating, sharing, using, and managing the knowledge and information of an organization. It refers to a multidisciplinary approach to achieving organizational objectives by making the best use of knowledge. So this is sharing knowledge. This is, uh, you can create knowledge articles in ServiceNow, for example. I've got two screenshots here. One shows the creation of the knowledge article, um, and it shows here it's published, um, the article type is HTML, it has the number, the article number, uh, what knowledge base it is assigned to, um, and the category, et cetera, et cetera. And this, is, this on the right is ultimately what it looks like when a customer views it. So this is for, so in, uh, and this is also for an incident deflection. And so you, uh, so there's fewer incidents created because users have access to knowledge articles to get the knowledge they need. And that wraps up the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And I wanted to hop in the ServiceNow application and show you how this kind of ties in. So we have all of these apps in ServiceNow. Uh, and the first one here is incident management. And you can see that there's several different links here. You can uh, create new, uh, you can see assigned to me, open, open unassigned, resolved incidents, all incidents, etc. cetera. Uh, so we'll look at an open incident. And you can see here, this is for SAP ER application is not accessible. This ticket was created. It's got an impact uh, an urgency of high and, and it, it resulted in a critical priority. Um, as you can see down here, uh, we have a couple of other applications in the ITSM process. So cha caused by change. Uh, so if if someone calls in and reports an incident, you can find out if it was caused by a specific change. And if it was caused by a specific change over the weekend, uh, then you'd put that here. Uh, and then you can uh, you can ultimately assign a change request to it there as well. And you can also link it to a problem. So a problem is what you create if the incident wasn't immediately resolved by the help desk agent. Uh, it needs more investigation. Uh, maybe there's additional incidents created for it. So you can also link a change request to this too once a resolution is found. Um, you can also, you, there's also a uh, related list down at the bottom of the problem form for incidents and problem tasks and outages, etc. So uh, you can, link back all of the incidents that were open for that particular problem. Likewise, are uh, changes to problems and incidents. And the change is ultimately, it's either the uh, caused by, which is what caused the issue, or uh, a change request to resolve the, um, the issue or problem. So as you can see here, it's got a number of different phases. Right now, it's in authorized phase. And you can see on the approvers tab, there's a number of approvals. 
So the assigned group was hardware for this particular case, and then once that is approved, it goes over to CAB approval, and they will approve it, et cetera, et cetera. So this is created once a resolution is found, and assuming an incident was created and a problem was created, and they found a solution or a workaround, uh, they create a change request, and all of this can be tied into each other. Knowledge management. So this is a these are different KB articles. And what we can do here is you can see once you if you've got the proper permissions, you can create KB articles and you can assign them to a specific knowledge base. You can have several different knowledge base are knowledge bases within I, uh, ServiceNow uh, and and provide different access levels to, depending on the groups. And uh, once they access them, um, you, what they'll look like, they'll have a link and they, they can open up the article and it'll look like this. And you can have any variety of different HTML and, and things like that to uh, um, display the information. So this is meant to kind of help users uh, get the information they need without having to call into service desk. It's kind of a deflect, an incident deflection. And finally, oh, there's asset. Let's look at asset. So assets, uh, this is asset management. So this is where I was discussing with you about the um, tracking of uh, different hardware. So these could be any number of things, like this one has an Mac, Apple MacBook Pro 15 inch. Um, it can track keyboards, mice, everything that's uh, tangible, intangible. It can also track intellectual property or whatnot, anything that's of value to the organization. Uh, see a serial number here, uh, the location, et cetera, et cetera, the date it was assigned, uh, installed, if it applies, um, and the company. Uh, any number, and there's a bunch of different tabs, financial tab, disposal tab, uh, depreciation, contracts, and items, activities, et cetera. So it has a whole slew of different um, uh, fields that are relevant to assets. And with service request management, you can create catalog items, which can be shown on a service portal. So an example of a particular catalog item, as you can see here, Microsoft Surface Pro 3, and you can order now. Uh, these are these are generally a lot more, they're a little bit more complex. Uh, you can have fields here for requested for, requested by, et cetera, and you can have questions um, and what will result will be a ticket on the back end, much like this would be, but it would have all of those variables displayed for the fulfiller to see. Um, and there would be approvals and whatnot and tasks generated for the for the fulfiller. And this is generally, you can have the, you can maintain, you can view these inside for, for ServiceNow users. You can maintain a service catalog internally or you can use a portal. And this is what a typical portal looks like. So if a user comes out here, if they're not using ITSM, end users can come here and they can request something. And they have a bunch of links here. Uh, you can request backup, office desktop, whatever whatever you wanna create for a, a catalog item, you can throw it in these different categories um, and display them that way. So it's a little easier for uh, people to navigate and find. So let's say somebody wants to order an executive desktop, they can click out here. And they can order that. They can, uh, you know, select the memory they need and whatnot. So this, this is, uh, this is really nice um, in that it, it kind of controls. It keeps people from calling service desk asking for these things. It's, it's contained in the the uh, uh, a structure where um, it's got approvals and tasks and stuff on the back end. Um, and it's it's very nice to um, to have this out there. Um, for end users, and that that covers uh, pretty much ITSM. There are a number of applications. There's there's a little bit more. There's more things that encompass ITSM. There's like uh, there's configuration management that ties into it, um, and we can get the, we can get into that another time. Uh, but these are the main uh, themes or processes slash applications that make up ITSM and how how the company um, runs their business. Um, I hope this has helped you, um, and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.